Hey everybody, I'm Jimmy and welcome back to Jimmy Does Knitting. Um, this is a podcast where I talk about knitting. It's not your typical knitting podcast where it's finished off it, objects, work in progress, and um, acquisitions. It is usually themed based on what's happening in my life around my knitting saga, and then we just deep dive into a topic and go from there. Uh, today, we are talking about the perfect summer shirt. And let me tell you, this is a doozy. This is a bit of a saga that's gone on for a year, year and a half. Uh, so buckle in, it's going to be less show and tell and more tell. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about all the things. We're gonna cover the yarn. We're gonna cover the different patterns. We're gonna cover the swatching. Uh, and the not liking the patterns, and then what I actually ended up deciding on. So, buckle in, it is quite the ride. In the meantime, you can also find me on Ravelry at Jimmy Does Knitting, and my Instagram is stereo underscore bait. All of the patterns mentioned, all of the um, information that I have is going to be in the show notes down below, so just click show more and you can see that. And welcome. So what I really want, and one of the things that I really enjoy about knitting, which if you've been following me, you know, is I love a cabled sweater. Um, this is not necessarily, this is a textured sweater. Let me go over this first. How about that? This is the Ryo sweater um, by, the name will be down below. I don't really remember. Um, it's a saddle shoulder sweater with this really beautiful like caterpillar stitch. I don't know if you can see it in this light. Um, it's knit on the Yarbo yarn. I talk about how I feel about it in my 11 men sweater patterns uh, video, uh, but I, I still really like the sweater and that's what I wanted to wear today. Today is King's Day here in the Netherlands. So it's a holiday and a day off. And yeah, everybody's just like out at flea markets and getting drunk and like going to parties and doing stuff. And I've had some serious life decisions to make and some reflecting to do today, so I kept it low, decided we're going to film a podcast and talk about things that I'm passionate about, and we'll see what happens with life coming up. I'm a little nervous, but I'll keep you all informed when the time is going. Um, so let's talk knitting. As you know, uh, or may not know, I love uh, like a texture and like a black cable knit sweater. That is like my favorite thing about knitting is that. And I also, for the summer, need something like that, but like slutty. And I need it to be see-through, a little bit of body, we can wear it on the beach, nobody cares. Um, just like a fun summer, like thing that's a little like Rick Owens, but also like something that I made and I've been searching for the perfect pattern, which I'm not sure that we're still there. Spoiler alert. I don't think we're there, but I think we're on the right track. And um, let's discuss this journey. The first one that I did was I did the Pure Mesh Pullover by James and Watts, and that didn't make the light of day. I, I did it with the wrong type of yarn, and also I was um, on burnout from work, so that's not a great time to feel body confident. It was really nice because I got to learn lace, and I think he has really easy, approachable patterns, and I think that they're like, he's really good at a, like a slutty summer shirt or like a summer thing, and that one was one of the first ones that I saw. Uh, I got through the body and a sleeve, and I think I almost finished the other sleeve, and then I scrapped it. It was just with some scrap yarn anyway, and it was fine. I have nothing against the pattern. I just wasn't, I just didn't feel like confident and beautiful in it, which is what I, I want to do. So that was my first attempt. Then the second attempt that I had was called the DNA Pullover by Andrea Cole, and it was an interweave knit um, winter 19. And you're saying winter, how is this winter? Um, it's because I decided to knit uh, like an Aran thing, but like make it cable knit. And that's how we went. The, <laughs> the actual sweater is supposed to be knit in a worsted weight yarn. It's supposed to be like nice, cozy Aran sweater. 
And I did it out of some tensile yarn, which I've discussed before. And it's like a very, tensile is very drapey. The fabric is very splitty and I did it out of black yarn. Um, the pictures that you can see, either you've seen or are, are going up right now, are really kind of interesting. The, the first one, when I finished it, it looked so nice. It had like a little bit of gapes. Um, just because of the nature of a cable knit and then like a fingering weight yarn on like a five millimeter needle. It had that like opening in space when it, you know, like the cables were tight and then it would expand just because of how it is. And I really love that, especially like twisted stitches, um, how they really clip together and then like expanded afterwards. I thought it was really great. And it was a beautiful sweater. It took me like four months to make and I was in love with it. This is going to be my beach thing. I wore it to Greece on family holiday. It was my everything. The problem comes in is that I picked the worst yarn to use this for. Tinsel is very drapey, which is nice. Sometimes I would not recommend it for a garment. It probably grew like a foot, 18 inches in length. So it ended up being like a mini dress. And because the fibers were not like strong enough or like tightly wound, it really started to like split and come apart. And it made it through the summer. It ended on my last holiday in Croatia in September, where it just, it started falling apart. Like it was a beautiful thing. Um, it had expanded. Uh, it just was the, it was the wrong yarn choice. It was it was totally wrong yarn choice. It was a beautiful thing, but it had its day. I've learned my lesson and um, it's done. And I didn't want to re-knit it because I didn't really want to re-knit an Aran sweater. I wanted something a little bit more simple to do for this year and look into it. So I did knitting, knitting, knitting last year. And then January this year, I decided that I needed to start like getting on this. and. If I'm going to be honest, I'm just not feeling the patterns. I'm just not feeling the patterns. Sometimes I go through phases where it's just like, I don't like anything anybody designs, so whatever. Um, there were a couple things that I started exploring and I actually hated the swatches so much that I threw a lot of them out, which I should have saved, but I really started exploring lace. And lace, for some reason, is, is just something that I really haven't ever done. Um, that it's, I lose con I lose count of my stitches and I'm a really good knitter. I can do like a full color work. I can do like cables all over, but for some reason lace trips me up a little bit. So I was trying all these lace patterns and it wasn't really working. It doesn't really help that I do a continental pearl. So like the stitch is switched. And if I knit two together, then like one's switched and one's not, it's a big old mess. But I was doing like lace on like five millimeter needles I, my stitches were all off and also the gauge was making it look really weird and I just I didn't like it the one I did like is this one that I have I have a bunch of extra like holst that I've been doing so I, I did swatches with the different things this is supposed to be a take on ribbing I don't know how successful it was I kept it because maybe there's something in here for later but yeah, I did like a thousand lace swatches. I really like a chevron. So I tried to do like chevrons in like five millimeter with fingering weight and see how it was. And it was just, girl, it was a mess. Where <laughs> it just wasn't that. And I tried a bunch of different stuff. So I think the designing my own thing with like lace just wasn't going to happen. And, um, they're not a lot of like male patterns, which makes sense because most women do it. Um, and there's not a lot of unisex stuff. And it's just like a lot of like women's lacy tees with like floral motifs or just like a regular plain tee. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be like a little edgier or a little bit more fun. And I was like, I don't know what to do. But then I discovered like the 90s to the max. I did, um, condo knitting, which is what I found out. And I'll show you an example here. This was not the most successful, but you can get an idea of it. What you do is you knit one row with, can you see this? You can do one row with um, one 
size needle and then the row back with another size needle. So for this, I used like a three millimeter and then like an eight millimeter maybe. And I don't think it was big enough. Like I should have used like a 20 millimeter and like a three millimeter for this. But I think condo knitting has a place. I guess it reminds me of 90s Florida. It really reminds me of 90s Florida. And I was like hoping to have this sort of like boho whatever thing. And in the end, I decided against it because it just sort of looks like a loose stockinette, at least with these needles. And I was hesitant to buy more needles to go up a size. So um, no condo knit thing for me. And then I did some other experiments with some scrap yarn. This is a beautiful thing that I absolutely love. And why I swatched this was, first of all, it's easy because it's ribbing. It's not any um, like cabling, but also knit this at a larger gauge. Um, and it starts to pull apart, like with these wraps. It, it pulls the yarn apart in a different way. And also with the ribbing, it makes it like a little bit of, like you can have some tension issues and in a regular gauge, that's not so noticeable. But when you like use a larger needle than recommended usually for the gauge, then you get this sort of like opening and closing of the fabric and then making it more irregular, which is really what I wanted to achieve. And I think that this was really nice and we were almost there and I was about to buy this yarn in black. Um, this is the Bicycle by Stephen West. I think the black is called Copenhagen actually because he had a big sale and I looked at it. Um, I did not buy it, I was strong. And um, yeah, I, so I thought that something like this would be nice. And I, in the end, did not do it. What I really wanted to do then was like, okay, how do we, first of all, what is this? Maybe I recreate an Aran sweater, but don't use cables. I just use like twisted stitches in that motif. And what I did was this. So it has the center thing, just like the last swatch. And then the ribbing is actually twisted stitch ribbing. And then this really would make it like pull I don't even know if you can see this, but it would make it like pull a little bit more and like create some variation. I can't really see this. Let me see if I can do this on the blocking map. Maybe this is a little better. Um, and then I would have sort of like, you know, that like twisted cable part in the middle of an errand and then the, the ribbing that was simple. But in the end, what happened with this is I didn't like these longer floats on the side. This is really just a, let me get the other swatch out. So what you do is if you don't have the, um, you can see it here, the, these longer floats that would happen. And so I would have the center panel with these longer floats, not floats, but like, um, like sections of ribbing that would just be like uneven from the rest of the thing. And I really didn't like that. So I was about to cast on a whole sweater with that. And I just, it was a no, it was a no. But what I did do in the meantime is I bought some yarn because I just needed to buy some yarn. And I realized I forgot to take the yarn. So hold on, I'll be right back. All right, we are back. I have found a yarn and the yarn choice for this was also an issue. Um, I didn't want to use all plant fibers because I'm scared after the drape that the tensile had, I realized different plant fibers react differently. Cotton's super heavy. Um, the tensile is light, but super drapey. It's because the actual fiber length is quite long and it doesn't have much spring to it. So I knew that I wanted to make something out of like a mixed fiber. I still, I almost went for a regular sock yarn because it has that nylon content 
and wool. So it will be a little lighter, but it will have the strength. And I wanted some strength because if I knit these where like the actual cord is a little bit more exposed, if that makes any sense, because it's on a larger needle, I didn't want it to like snag or break. So like my typical holst would not be good because that's pretty like terrible. Um, like as in the action of tearing, I don't think that the yarn is terrible. And so I was thinking about a sock yarn, maybe a DK yarn, maybe like a merino cotton mix or something like that, but I wanted it to be fingering weight and I was unsure. And I don't like knitting with synthetic fibers, otherwise I would have just bought some some sock yarn. So I'm still, me and socks, we, we haven't come to an agreement yet. I'm not quite ready for socks, but um, I am ready for sock yarn, if that makes sense. And what I settled on was this onion nettle sock yarn. It's just their black color. I don't know what it is. It's a fingering weight yarn that's 70% wool and 30% nettle fibers. And what this is, is they take like the fibers from the nettles, they like chemically process it to break it down to the cellulose structure, and then they spin it in with some wool and you get um, a little bit of that like length and strength of the plant fiber and a little bit of the drape. But then you also get like the comfort of the wool. So that's what I wanted to dry with this yarn and I knew I wanted to use it. So that's what I knit this swatch up in and I like the yarn. I think it's good. Um, I don't have much of an opinion on it right now because I haven't made more than a couple of swatches with it. But um, yeah, I wanted to use it. I just wanted to explore. I, you know, one of the things I said in my 2023 beginning video is I just want to explore different yarn, different fiber types, see what's happening. So we settled on this. I'll let you know how it's going once we get there. Um, and then I went on another thing. I was like, you know what? I'm going to find a pattern that I like. I love it. And I'm going to buy yarn for it. And so then I... I had to buy yarn for my nephew and, and his stuff, and I panic bought yarn. I panic bought some, like, linen yarn for um, the Say Hall Crochet's Design Crochet Drop Stitch shirt. So that one, as you can see by the pictures that I'm showing right now, sort of has that condo knitting vibe. It's crochet, but um, it has, like, really different stitches, and I thought it looked really kind of, like, beachy and cool, and like I could maybe add sleeves if I wanted to and like sure it was crochet but it was really cool. Um, I downloaded the, the pattern and I didn't realize that I needed a 20 millimeter hook and so that was like almost as much as the yarn that I like mon on money I spent on the yarn and the pattern um, to get it like to me it was like 25 euros or something and I was like I just I don't want to do that for this sweater I don't want to invest in one tool that I'll use once. So I decided against it. I still think it's a beautiful design. If you want to give me a 20 millimeter crochet hook, I'm happy to make it. But because I thought about that when I panic bought yarn, I bought this yarn. And um, I went to the Bry Web Shop, which is a Dutch store and they sell a lot of drops. And so I, I bought some drops, Bow Mill Lin Unicolor. They say it's an Aran, it's like a worsted weight. And it's 50% cotton, 50% linen. No, it's 53% cotton and 47% linen. Um, and it's like a worsted weight plant fiber yarn. So I'm really kind of curious to see how this goes. I've started using it. It's all right to knit with. Um, it probably is not my first choice of thing. Uh, but I decided to go with it. Um, to do the was it the drop stitch thing didn't use it but I'm going to use this for a project and we will see that. Then I found a new podcast and kids this one just I got obsessed with. Her name is Mel Makes Stuff. She's a like a mostly an editor from uh, Massachusetts. And what I really like about her podcast is she does these like very technical knits. She does a lot of color work, but also like the construction and how she alters it 
and how she changes the pattern and stuff I think is really cool and she explains like even the math or like the logic behind it so if you want something a little bit more technical with like a lot of like Shetland knitting and stuff go check her out it's really really interesting watch I would say that like 90% of the stuff she's making I would never make but I'd like to hear her insights about it and I think that that's could be applicable to like pattern design or something else that I do and I really love to see just like how she goes with things um she doesn't really have a regular podcasting schedule but go check out Mel Makes Stuff um yeah super 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 good but Mel Makes Stuff did the Plumetis by Julie Knits um, Julie Knits in Paris from Pomcom Quarterly Issue 40, which is Spring 22. And this one, like, had me. I had to cast it on. I had to try it. Uh, I almost bought a ton of mohair for this, but I decided against it last minute because, um, I'm a gentleman. I have chest hair. And I wanted to wear this just like bare skin and have it be like a little bit more see-through and stuff. And I was really concerned that the toothiness of the mohair was going to catch on my actual like chest hair and we would just have problems. So I decided that like, oh, this onion nettle yarn that I was going to use, we're totally going for it. Made a swatch of it. I think it was fantastic. I was really enjoying the design. I was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I went to go cast it on. And so I was going to make some modifications to this. I was really just going to do a simple I-cord cast on. Um, just make the neckline like an I-cord. If, if you see the pattern, it has like a little collar, like a little papillon. And then the on the bottom is one by one ribbing in like a fingering weight yarn. And then same thing with the the um, sleeves and I was like I just want something simple and it was a pretty easy like repeat of pattern and I thought it was really kind of nice and how they were were doing it but I was like yeah so I cord bottom cuffs neckline just do the pattern as instructed don't do the there was like a, a puff sleeve I didn't want the puff sleeve I wanted to make it a little bit more masculine and just use this fingering weight yarn that I have for everything and I was so excited to cast this on and then I started and I immediately lost steam. I like completely like flopped. Is this going to look too feminine? Am I a polka dots type of guy? What's going on with all this stuff? Like this I cord seems to be taking forever. Am I really into this? And the answer was, I don't think that that's what I wanted to do. I really like the pattern and I probably am going to make it at one point in my life. But now is not the point and I don't know if I'm going to make it for myself or somebody else and so I just decided against it. I scrapped it, I took everything out and went back to the drawing board yet again and I I hit two things. One, um, I did see this one picture on Instagram which I cannot find whatsoever and I have no idea where it went. I tried to look in my favorites, like everything I liked and I don't know. But I've been toying with, especially like on this swatch, like the idea of these like longer spaces. And I was like, well, I can just drop a stitch. And then this thing came up and like the sweater came up and it like, you could just drop a stitch. And I was like, this is it. These are my long floats. This is how I make my thing slutty. This is how we go forward. So I took my linen and I did a swatch. And um, this is actually living in my hide and hammer bag. I don't know if I said this, this was an indulgent Christmas present to, well, not to myself, from my parents to me. Um, and I was like, yeah, I, I want a hide and hammer bag. I want to see what's going on it. I don't really have knitting bags. I keep my things in baskets or honestly just on the floor. I should treat my knits with a little bit more respect. Sometimes it's a tote bag, sometimes it's not. But that's that's what we're dealing with here. Um, we're not so professional. And I swatched like 12 times trying to figure out this drop stitch thing. And I'm actually going to use this this blocking mat. And maybe, and you can see this. Yes, this is good. Um, and I played around with 
um, trying to create some sort of pattern like this. And this is exactly what I want and what I like and what's going on. Um, currently, there's a lot of stuff happening in my personal life, uh, mostly the intensity of work. And I just like don't have the brain space to figure out a whole lot of stuff. It just it just doesn't exist. I've actually picked up my granny stripe blanket and I'm just crocheting on that. I crocheted, I finished the other blanket I was doing. I like, I just, I need something that's like super, 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 super simple and like no thinking and I'm done. Um, but I found this and I figured it out and this is my little swatch. And I'm very excited about this and I'm going to make a sweater for it. The easiest way that I know how to design is bottom up and then the sleeves are top down. Like that's the easiest way I can figure out how to do this. So I have started, oops, on this because it's fairly easy. Um, and I can explain a little bit my, about my process. It doesn't look like much now because it's, 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 it's crazy. And I will say that if I redid this, I would probably do it in a DK cotton merino. Although this is just the yarn that I have and I would write the pattern slightly differently. I'm not sure that I want to do the bottom up, top down. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. If I redo this, if I have the space, if some things happen and I have some more spare time, then that's what we're going to do. But we can start with the bottom. So what I did is I just did a garter cast on and I made it super, super simple. So I, I took that gauge knowing how the pattern will be and I figured out <clears throat> how many like stitches I would need to have for the base and then for the body where the things happen. And what you do is, is this really cool idea of like doing a cast on casting off a bunch of stitches and then like casting on some stitches, which creates these little holes. So like this is almost 200 stitches at the beginning and then you knit in stock and net and this goes so fast because it's super, 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 super simple, which is exactly what I need and exactly what I wanted. But then you reduce the stitches by like almost a third and just knit in the round. So this looks teeny tiny um, and yeah, so like, I, I think it's the same amount of stitches as the Saturday Shrug. So you have like a bunch, a full sweater, and then you knit a lot less to get the full sweater later on. How I'm approaching this, aside from the actual just like drop shoulder, whatever, is part of this will unravel once I get to the point where I'm ready for it to unravel and then it will create the space and it will expand. And I think that that's going to be really cool and I'm very much looking forward to it. And I will probably have to do another version if I really want to like release this as a pattern. But for now, we're playing around, we're experimenting. I don't know about this garter stitch bottom. I really don't. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It's just something I'm going to wear. But what I am cautious of is the fiber in this. Um, sorry, my needles are very clicky. The fiber is the linen cotton, and I know that it's going to be heavy, and I know that it's going to drape some, which is fine and kind of what we're expecting. But knowing that, when I knit it up, I'm expecting it to go a little like this. So it's going to end up after wearing like slimmer which is fine and longer and so i think that like the body itself needs to be a little shorter to accommodate for this and same thing with like the the like the the underarm like where that hits so i think that it needs to be knit slightly shorter and slightly wider so then it can like drape and like do what the fiber does that's what i'm thinking I'm not entirely sure. I will give you a full report after it's done and go for it. Um, this year, I am not burnt out. Well, a little bit, but like, I'm not like full on burnout. I'm not going crazy. I've been doing a lot of Ashtanga and I'm a lot more confident with my body. So we will also, I'll be, also be more keen to wear this once it's ready. 
and I will I will show it to you when that happens. So I'm looking forward to this. Right now, this is on pause. We're just doing the granny stripe. That's all we can do. Although I do have that other one, which is a full over color work, which is in my queue, which I really want the sweater, but like I can't bother to be picking it up right now. It just is not, not within my capabilities. So that's summer knit number one. Summer knit number two. Um, Mr. Does Knitting also wants some knit stuff and he keeps sending me things off of like Instagram and whatever. And I've done a swatch for you, but I haven't really done any planning for it beyond the swatch. It's just like been steam blocked and that's it. So I, I wanted a, once again, a simple lace that I'm not gonna get too confused with and that I can make into um, just like a, a vest or like a tank top, whatever you wanna call it for him. And I decided that I liked this stitch, not the top part, but the bottom. And um, there's a thread in there somewhere. Anyway, there's a thread on the back there, but it's just like a typical like lace motif with like eyelets. And it creates this nice mesh. This is out of the onion nettle yarn and I'm going to use that for his knit. And it's just going to be like a standard lace wife beater, but like for a man. And I think that that will look really nice. I also might write this up into a pattern. Um, and I'm not really sure how to grade anything. If I'm going to be honest, <clears throat> it makes sense to me to like write a pattern up and figure out decreases and how to get things and like how to get the measurements I want and what I want to do. But then you try to put it in another size and I'm like, like I have to start from scratch again. Is that how it goes? I know it's not. I know that there's Excel for a bunch of this stuff, but I am not there yet. I've ordered a book. It's supposed to be here by now, but it's not. Uh, maybe, maybe that, that, that will probably change this year. I'm probably going to start writing some knitting patterns and try to get those out into the world. Um, if you're interested in test knits, I would say that most of my stuff is going to be designed with a male in mind, however, or a male body in mind. However, I would say things are fairly unisex. Um, I do not account for like busts or curvy bodies in my design because I just, don't have that. Um, but I don't necessarily think that I'm like, you know, let's only design men's patterns, but I think like a male leaning pattern is, is what I'm getting at. So all that to say is I spent about a year and a half. I've done a thousand bajillion swatches. I've tried a bunch of different techniques and I'm going with the two most boring ones that I can possibly find after my little thing, which is the, the drop stitch and this like really, really simple lace. And I think that that's fine. I think that like, I really want to design some complicated stuff, but especially recently I'm finding like, I want things that are nice and that I like, but I want them to be um, just like plain and easy and like approachable and accessible for now. I mean, I have some other designs that are like super complicated that I have in my mind, but I, I also just need something simple, like my brain is fried most days and I just need it to be simple, <laughs> make it easy for me. So <clears throat> that's what's gonna happen. So in conclusion, I have two summer knit plans. That being said, um, I don't know when these are going to be done. I'd ideally like to have them done by like June, July, just to like wear, cause that's when-ish. The weather will be maybe nice enough here. It's really cold here. Like today I wore a winter jacket out. It's late April. It just like doesn't get warm. In the Netherlands, we have like one week, one week of summer and that's it. So for that week, I wanted to have, oops, sorry, bike issues. Um, editing Jimmy, you're gonna have a fun day. But uh, I want the simple knits to like, just as an experiment, we can test it over the winter. We can get these released in proper. I can redo the designs, or especially the first one, I would redo if I wanted to knit that up as a pattern and really like explore some like different summer knits that are also approachable, a little fun, and like see where that goes. And yeah. 
Anyway, I just wanted to be feeling myself and celebrating my body and the bodies of others and um, just designing my own stuff that I like by myself because just nothing's really speaking to me. So that's where we are. That is the summer of the, the summer, the saga of the slutty summer knits. Uh, next episode, I think it's just going to be a general catch-up because I'm sure we're going to have lots to discuss. I've been working on some things. I have not, um, I don't really have much of like a theme going on aside from all my weird swatching and stuff. So it will be a curious one and, uh, stay tuned and thank you all for joining me. Don't forget if you made it here, like, subscribe, tell all your friends, um, and yeah, get ready for summer, start celebrating your bodies, get the yarn, and like, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna make something that's like, you know, gives you a little zhuzh as you go out. Anyway, happy King's Day, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.